Pretty dumb question to ask my, somebody. My, uh, <laughs> First question in an interview. My private roadie will take care of it. So you're going to be doing a show tonight? Yeah, that's right, at Islands down in Houston. That's on Main Street. Yeah. I believe so, yeah. And, uh, gosh, I heard there's going to be some films there. That's right, we've got all the Ralph Records films. That's everybody that has films on Ralph, which is Snake Finger and Tuxedo Moon. Five residence films, including Third Reich and Roll and Hello Skinny. And uh, let's see, MX-80. That's about it, really. About eight or nine films, all in all. And we have Mr. Uh, well, um, Osmosis here. Hi, Snake. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Um, my first question, uh, have you been having fun lately? I've been having tons of fun. I've been looking for America and finding it in all the oddest places. I bet. Uh, have you, you haven't gotten a, uh, plate full of America. I'm, I see that you're, uh, in the last part of your tour and still, uh, going for it in lust-like fashion. Oh, I'm, I'm lusting after America. I'm having a fantastic time. It's like, uh, I want to do it again, too, and spend more time in the places that I really, really liked and uh, go back and ride the, uh, ride the mine fucker at, at um, Atlanta, Six Flags over Georgia. Anything uh, real exciting that you might want to share um, that's happened in this last tour? Well, I say that I stayed at the Atlanta Holiday Inn and went to Six Flags over America and then found a, an old guitar in an old pawn shop, very cheap, the day after I broke my other guitar that I usually use on stage and discussed one evening. And uh, I figure that's a lot of America in one day. How, how did you exciting. smash your guitar? Was it uh, pretty much intentful or...? It was moderately intentful. It was, uh, yeah, I guess so. I'd, I'd had a bit of a miserable time with the PA on stage, so just, you know, one of those silly little temper tantrums that, that you know, people who haven't quite grown up properly have from time to time. Well, um... It's the only prima donna action. <laughs> I guess. Well, how, how did you, uh, you like the place where you're set up this evening? Seems to be pretty good seems to be like it could be fun. I mean, it's all going to depend on the people there. If they're a bunch of bozos, I'll have a miserable time. But if they're all generally players and moderately intelligent and in the groove, well, I'm sure we'll have a great time, regardless of the place. Well, it's just about all we got. It's about the only club in Houston where any uh, top-name band is able to play, period. And uh, I've, I've seen some really nice shows, just where the energy was up on both sides and just things kind of... Uh, welded together the room's fine i think the sound should be really good with a bit of luck <clears throat> if there are enough people there the sound would definitely be good so um anything uh, you'd like to ask mr Hendershot? i've got a bunch of things to ask but i yes. just want to give somebody else a turn the original group you were in uh the chili willies uh can you uh tell us about them an obscure group and nobody seems to really know about them very much sure they they did pretty good in england and one of the reasons that we all decided to quit was because they were doing a bit too good for us at the time we had things like elton john and rod stewart tooting up cocaine in our dressing room dis discussing where they were going to avoid paying their taxes this year and that kind of thing so it was looking a bit too close for comfort. We decided that we'd want to knock it on the head right then just so that we could all keep our creativity up and like Jake, our manager, went on to start Stiff Records and he manages Elvis Costello and Nick Lowe and some of the guys went to yeah. play with Elvis Costello and uh, some guys went to go work with Nick Lowe. I keep in touch with them all pretty good. You know, when we were, when we were back there just last month, they all came to the gig and it was a great big reunion. Very nice, I'm sure. What were the name of the albums that the Chili Willies put out? first one's really obscure, very expensive. The residents bought me one for my birthday because I couldn't afford one. Um, it's called Kings of the Robot Rhythm on Revelation Records. And the second one is called Bongos Over Balam. Well, I've never seen either one of them. I look around fairly uh, carefully at all the, the uh, sort of used record stores and the collector's places, but have yet to come across one. They're kind of rare and valuable. The second one's more more 
available and not quite so expensive. The first one's pretty much totally unavailable and very, very expensive if you can find it. How's the second the one's being on reprinted it? in Japan, actually. Oh, all right. How's the music on it? Or kind what? of ethnic -y. It was groundbreaking at the time in England. There were just a bunch of heavy metal dinosaur type three-piece groups around everywhere. And if the, the, the pub rockers, who it is said is the sort of uh, spiritual father of punk rock or whatever, I don't know, whatever bollocks they say about old people like that, uh, the pub rockers were, came along and they, they took music much more at a basic level, you know, much more to have fun and much more to uh, express emotions and things like that. So uh, along with sort of Kilburn and the High Roads and Dr. Fieldwoods and Brinsley Schwartz, uh, Chilly Willy was one of, one of that crew, basically. And we were all had interchangeable members and we were all very friendly, helpful with each other, played lots of gigs together. The music was basically sort of based on early American music, based on bits of jazz, blues, even even country, you know, country swing. Yeah, that really turned my head. I was at the soundcheck this evening and uh, there was Snake Finger, Lithman and band playing country and also blues tunes and just really... I this like Texas. it. I really like it. We're all gonna wear cowboy Well, I, I almost said yeehaw. <laughs> Almost said yeehaw. Um, and Played even barbecue county line. Um, and wasn't there a band you were in before, before Chili Willie, a Junior's blues Junior's band? Junior's blues band. Way earlier on in my career, I was very very young then, and uh, basically with a bunch of older guys and my my friend Martin Stone, who was with Savoy Brown, a few people like that. Uh, that's that's years and years ago. I mean, I've always been into blues heavily. I'm a guitar player, so I, the best guitar players are generally in the jazz blues department. You know, that's who you listen to and, and emulate when you're a kid. And uh, so that's that's the whole story. Okay, well, enough of dwelling into the past. Uh, what do you have in line for us? Uh, have you been working on anything new? Yeah, when we go back. We'll do the first album that I've done with a band for ages and ages. The last two I did on my own, but this will be with the band that I'm working with now. <laughs> that you're touring with? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, who were you? Who recorded with you before, on the previous two? Basically, it was on my own. I did all the stuff on my own, but for like a violin solo here, which I had Blaine from Tuxedo Moon do, or a sax solo, or something like that. I'd have someone come in. So the Ralph Crew stay kind of tight then? Yeah, they're pretty tight. Pe people down at Ralph, they're all jolly friendly and everything. Like well, family. They're, they're coming it's out kinda. with some really impressive stuff, really all the way around. Some great alternative music, uh, an American label. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's kind of rare to find some American groups. It's, 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 I hate to say it, but most of the good stuff is coming out of Europe these days. It's hard <gasps> to find... Uh, <laughs> um, a good, uh, solid, contemporary American still band. Stiff, right? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the good stuff is myself. I know that most of the good stuff I hear is on Ralph. It's most. That's where most of the interest, interesting stuff is. There are a few other labels that, that at least are trying. As you say, they're both over in Europe. What do you listen to other than Ralph? Well. Mostly what I listen to, definitely not not Ralph, mostly what I listen to are things like um, Aborigine music from Australia, film music, Chinese music, Japanese, Koto music, uh, Balinese, cymbal on orchestras and things like that. A lot of classical music, a lot of effects type music, and all, all heavily ethnic as far back down as you can get African, you know, really Gregorian blues stuff. Gregorian chants. Absolutely, yeah. Well, that's great. Are you uh, incorporating all this into your new stuff? or? I guess so, in a sort of inadvertent way. I don't think, oh, the, that Gregorian chant I heard the other day, I'll pull a bit of that into this. Although there's nothing wrong with that, you know, if you want to go and do that. There's nothing wrong in taking bits of other music and stealing them and putting them into your own. Yeah. They just don't have to fit into my scale right. of things. You know, it has to be, 
it would have to be built on my scale because I do certain things in my songs, you know. Okay, well, let's give the listeners a little bit, uh, bit of some music by Snakefinger, and uh, we'll be back in a moment.